Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. I welcome you to a thought-provoking conversation about the dark history of Christianity and its impact on the black community. Now today we're discussing a book that has left our brother heartbroken, How to Make the Racial Slayer a Christian. Now this book reveals the shocking truth about how Christianity was imposed on black people, not as a means of spiritual salvation, but as a tool of oppression. Through the lens of this book, we'll explore how slave masters like Reverend Charles Cocock Jones used Use Christianity to tame and subdue enslaved Africans, making them less of a threat to their Pamkala oppressors. We will examine how this twisted ideology was perpetrated and how it continues to affect the black community today. So join me as we take a look into this painful but necessary conversation. Let's uncover the truth about the intersection of Christianity and artism and how it has shaped the lives of black people for centuries. This is a conversation that requires courage, empathy, and an open heart. So let's get into the video. I'll I'll be right back. The title of this book is How to Make a Christian. Now, after having read this book, I realized that it doesn't talk really about, it talks a little bit about how to make a black man a Christian. It talks more about why is it important to make a black man a Christian. And very few books have broken my heart like this book. I will not lie to you. Very few books have broken my heart like this. Because this book firstly brought to my attention that we did not choose to be Christians. Christianity was imposed on us with the most, with the most vile, violent, inhuman methods that you can perceive. This book also clearly identifies the fact that for black people to become Christians it was more for the advantage of white people than it was for the advantage of black people it served the best interest of white people for me to be a Christian than it does save my interest another point it talks about this guy called dr reverend charles colcock jones dr charles colcock jones was a was a slave master who had plantations about six seven plantations and in each plantation there were slaves there were black slaves now in the north black people were not even allowed to worship god black people were not even allowed to be exposed to the message of christianity because these were savages these were animals now, this Colcock Jones was one of the first people who gathered the people in his plantations, black people, and started sharing the message of Jesus. During that time, there were a lot of slave insurrections meaning black people who were slaves would wake up in the middle of the night kill all the white people that were in the plantations burn their houses and run away they knew they would be caught they would be killed it didn't matter to them there were there are more than 400 slave insurrections that are recorded in america 
this is the guy who started saying let me gather black people and let me teach them about Jesus let me teach them about the gospel and he realized this the more he taught them the Bible the more he taught them the Bible the more tamed the more docile the more the more um, diluted they became the more he taught them the gospel the more humble they became the more he taught them the gospel the more a threat the less a threat they became to white people and he's one of the few people who never had a slave insurrection in his plantations now he took it upon himself to teach white people and said do not be afraid to teach black people the message of Christianity because it makes them less militant it makes them docile it makes them humble it makes them controllable now the revelations in this book are a stark reminder of the dark history of christianity and its role in perpetuating artism and oppression the fact that christianity was imposed on black people through violent and inhuman methods is a tragedy that cannot be ignored. The story of Reverend Charles Cocock Jones is particularly disturbing as it highlights how slave masters used Christianity as a tool to control and subdue enslaved Africans. The idea that teaching black people about Jesus would make them more docile and less militant is a twisted ideology that has long lasting consequences. Now this book is a wake up call for all of us to confront the painful truth about the intersection of Christianity and artism. It's a reminder that religion can be used as a tool of oppression and that we must be vigilant in our pursuit of justice and equality. Now, Christianity has a complex and problematic history when it comes to its impact on black people. While the faith has brought comfort and solace to many, it has also been used as a tool of manipulation and control. From the days of slavery to the present, Christianity has been wielded as a weapon to subdue and oppress black people. Slave masters used biblical teachings to justify the enslavement of Africans, claiming that they were doing God's work by bringing heathens to Christ. Now, even after emancipation, Christianity continued to be used to keep black people in their place. The emphasis of submission, obedience, and forgiveness has been used to pacify and quiet the voices of those seeking justice and equality. The legacy of this manipulation can still be seen today. Many black people have been taught to turn the other cheek in the face of artism and oppression, rather than standing up for their rights. Now, the message of love and forgiveness has been distorted to mean that black people should accept their circumstances and wait for a better life in the afterlife. But this is not the only way to interpret Christianity. There is a long tradition of black liberation theology that sees Jesus as a freedom fighter and a champion of the oppressed. Now, this perspective emphasizes the importance of standing up against injustice and fighting for equality. It's time for us black people to reclaim the faith and use it as a source of empowerment rather than a tool of manipulation. Now, when we look at the transatlantic slave trade, it was a brutal system that relied on violence and coercion to maintain control over enslaved Africans. However, palm color slave masters soon discovered that Christianity could be a powerful tool in their arsenal of oppression. By teaching enslaved black people a distorted version of Christianity, slave masters aimed to break their spirits and make them more submissive. Now, they emphasized teachings that promoted humility, obedience, and forgiveness, while ignoring the parts of the Bible that spoke to freedom, justice, 
and equality. Specifically, slave masters use teachings such as slaves obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling. And Ephesians 6 verse 5, do not resist an evil person. Matthew 5 verse 39, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5 verse 44. Now, these teachings were used to convince enslaved Africans that their situation was ordained by God and that resistance or rebellion was sinful. They were taught to accept their circumstances and focus on their reward in the afterlife. Slave masters promoted a false narrative that black people were heathens and savages who needed to be civilized through Christianity. Now, this narrative was used to justify the brutal treatment of enslaved black people and to erase their cultural identities. The impact of this manipulation was devastating. Enslaved Africans were forced to surrender their cultural practices, languages, and beliefs and adopt a foreign faith that was used to control them. The legacy of this trauma can still be seen today as many black people struggle to reconcile their faith with the historical abuse of Christianity. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts, your contributions as well in the comment section. Thank you for always watching and see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting videos, like and be part of this conversation by sharing your thoughts in the comment section down below.